All right, welcome back. Does having sex make us happier? Hmm, seems like an obvious answer, but here with more and yet another sex study is sexpert Dr. Limor Blockman. Hi, my dear. I mean, it seems that's like one of these things that just seems obvious. So yeah, why do a study on this? Yeah, because it's interesting and because everybody's taking interest in if we are having more sex, is it making us happier? And I was saying to the people outside, I was having a conversation, and they They're said, yeah, asking. of course, <laughs> of course. And so the, the researchers, as I said, took interest, and they took two studies, actually. One of them took 128 people, the ages of 35 and 56, and they divided them into two groups, control and, a subject, uh, and, and the actual group. And the actual group was asked to double their dose of sexual activity. So, for instance, How did they get the having, other person to comply? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, he was married couples okay. in a married relationship, yes, yes, it wasn't any, you know, any initiation that was problematic. So they told him, okay, double it, whatever you're doing, if you're having sex twice a week, do it, make it four, and so forth. And then the second study was, uh, and this lasted for three months, they were examining this. The second Must study was, tired. yeah, very exhausting. <laughs> The second study was 25,000 people. This was a very long longitudinal study that went over three decades from 89 to 2012. And they were examining the happiness factor and how often do they have sex. And you know, they correlated the two and examined it. So the results were very interesting. The first study, when they were asked to double their dose, people actually testified to be less happy. They said wow. they weren't enjoying their sex. They said they were, they felt that they were pushed into having more sex. They felt obligated. They felt it was a chore. They weren't enjoying it. And you know, everything was upside down. Whatever they expected didn't really happen. The second study that, that involved the 25,000 people actually resulted in more happiness for people that were having more, more sex. But get this, up to once a week. In other words, if you were having sex more than once a week, it didn't make you happier. And this was very what you, interesting. What do you attribute that to? I mean, like you were saying before, but the same thing, like it's just too much work? Too <laughs> much work? Well, you know, it depends because people, and that's, that, that was one of the conclusions, that people are having sex on average once a week. This was something that was average, and this was related to both genders. It doesn't matter if it was wh whichever age group, and also, um, and also uh, the length of your marriage didn't really implicate on this. Mm -hmm. So it didn't really matter. So the average, I want, uh, someone told me, can I get a prescription of it <laughs> once a week? So this was the result. Everybody was interested in having once a week, having sex once a week. And once you were trying to push it a little further, now of course we're not, it's, we're generalizing, but of course the average and the more acceptable uh, dose would be once a week. Another thing that they took interest in is is that you know what do people find bring them happy right happiness it was sex and and I was food. asking outside no money oh. so they were examining <laughs> for us food yeah so they were examining what was making people happier and they took a small group of 355 people and they examined what they were making a month uh, and and uh, compared it to people that were having either sex once a week or sex once a month. So the people in the group that were having 20, they were making 25,000 a year uh, versus people that were making 100,000 a, a year didn't show any difference in their happiness level. But the people that were having sex once a week comparing to once a month were much, much happier. So sex, infl sex influences our happiness much more than money. And my conclusion Dude, to that's this... A, that's a relief, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it seems like money makes the world go round. At I least know, there's... and absolutely. And my conclusion to it is really to not try to push the other party to have more sex, but actually make the sex more interesting, more invigorating, more you know sophisticated and adventurous nice well thank you thank you, thank you very much very interesting <laughs> all right meanwhile Thailand's wandering mystics used to carry out their ancient magical endeavors but as modern medicine pushes their supernatural gifts aside one mystic is fighting back through social media Thailand's mystical hermits used to spend their days alone in the forest deep in meditation but today's sorcerers are more connected than ever thanks to the power of the web Take Toon, a modern-day mystic who has used social media to grow a massive following across Asia. In the past, we were in a narrow community. We only used word of mouth. People could only come and meet us. Now with social media, we have Facebook, WeChat and Line. The 57-year-old now has hundreds of followers in places like Hong Kong, Taiwan, China, Malaysia and Singapore. He spends much of the year jet-setting around the region to conduct good luck ceremonies with a collection of sacred powders and ointments. 
Some clients even visit him at home, like Jim Hugh, who flies over from Taiwan every three months. I come here to ward off bad luck, mostly to make love fortune, which I use when a couple breaks up. And let's say a woman wants to get back with a man, so she comes here to ask for love fortune. It is clearly a lucrative business for Toon, whose clients pay hundreds of dollars for the ceremonies. Thanks to the Internet's global reach, Toon now has more foreign customers than Thais. But he claims his practice hasn't changed. No matter where they come from, everyone wants the same thing, love and money. As Lee Moore just said, love and money. All right, it turns out the uh, mighty T-Rex, not as fast as it's been portrayed in film and television. We see so many scary movies like Jurassic Park with people trying to outrun the blood-hungry dinosaur, but University of Manchester scientists are now using a new computer simulation to estimate their speed. Based on T-Rex muscles and skeletal strength, they discovered their maximum speed was 20 kilometers per hour. Had it moved from a brisk walk to a sprint, their legs simply would have snapped under their massive body weight. And uh, it's a mix of characters from WALL-E to Star Wars and even an emoji. Japan has created this adorable space camera drone that is a floating ball and has already been on the International Space Station, operated by remote control from here on Earth. And the footage is so good from space, it's uh, used to evaluate equipment and it saves astronauts time because they used to have to do this manually. And coming up next, curing PTSD, trauma and fear through rewiring your subconscious mind. NLP therapist Moran Ryder joins us live and the original creator of Wonder Woman based on a threesome? Plus, Daniel Roth here with the Nerd Alert. But first, the news.